hoping it's not too windy today to try this out. We're going to be trying an exercise that's used with uh, search and rescue dogs. It's a, it's a game that's played with uh, dogs early on to get them to uh, want to search for things and uh, to get interested and excited about looking. And many of you who know me personally or have watched some of my videos know that one of my goals is to have my horse be what I would consider a safety horse out on the trail. To be able to pull someone that's injured behind him out of the woods. To be able to pull someone out of a hole if they're stuck. Um, and this might be a high-end goal, but I'm teaching him whatever I can uh, find in the dog world of search and rescue in the hope that someday if someone approaches me out on the trail and says my kid's lost in the state forest can you go find him that maybe we can have a reasonably above average expectation that we can help them. In this video I'm going to be working on teaching my horse how to play a game that's usually used with puppies that are going to be used in search and rescue and the purpose of the game is to encourage the puppy to want to search, to want to look, to get excited about looking, and to teach them to look. And the game starts out very basic, where you just get the puppy to look in the different boxes, and then you make it more complicated. You put treats in some boxes, not in some boxes. You move the boxes farther away, you mix them up in different ways, and you put obstacles in the way, and you build up to a point where the animal has to actually go around a, a big wall or look inside something else to find the box. Um, we're starting out at the very basic level, and these are the first two sessions that I've done with my horse. The first part of the exercise is to lay out boxes and pieces of cardboard in a straight line and to put a treat in each one of them with the hope that when he finds the first one he realizes to go to the next one, the next one, and the next one. Now he might be a little spooked about seeing all these boxes in a row so I'm not really sure how he'll handle it for the first time but if he's spooked about them we'll just work through that and continue on. After he gets so that he can go into the long string of boxes and look in each one and get the hay stretch of pellets out then we'll alternate and put pellets in maybe the first few and then skip one and see if he'll go on to the next one and look in the next one even though he comes across one that's empty. I'm going to try and lay out some that are relatively easy to start off with these might not be so easy here because they might move, but we'll see what he does. Actually, I'm going to put the box. <laughs> You're here ahead of time, Bubby. You're here ahead of time. You are here ahead of time. Let's see what you do.
the beginning. I thought that was good. Then he went back over there and looked at that box again. We'll reach a point where he'll look in the box to be empty, and I'll expect that he'll go look in a different box. But right now, I want to reward him for looking in the box. I don't want to rush the process too much, too fast. A lot of times when horses don't get things, it's because people add too many steps at once. You gotta make stuff as simple as you can to start off with. You can test the see if you can move on to something a little bit more difficult. But if you can back back up in the process, if it's too difficult for you, you should be able to You need to make it very easy. You need to be able to get the right response very often. Make it more challenging until he understands the game. We want the game to be fun. So he has to have a lot of success in the game. The game to be fun. Putting quite a bit right now. Once he gets the idea to go into all the boxes and check them all out, then I'll put less. This is all we'll do today with them though, is get him curious about the boxes, get him to go into each box. Maybe tomorrow I'll try mixing it up and put uh, some carrots in that big box that he doesn't want to put his head inside. Even if you don't use this exercise for its intended purpose, it has some value in that it can help your horse really start to think and process and learn how to think through problems. And it also can serve as a despooking uh, exercise. As you saw in some of the clips, my horse is afraid of that big box. He doesn't want to put his head inside that big box. Sometimes issues like that are depth perception with a horse. He, they see the darkness of the box and they don't know how deep it is. So they don't want to put their head in it. Sometimes that's the problem you have with puddles. They can't really tell how deep it is and, and that can spook them. So he needs to work through that problem that he has with that box and he will eventually before we get done. This is a preliminary game that's used with some uh, dog trainers when they're starting to teach search and rescue with puppies. So I thought this is where we'd start with him. <laughs> he's he's going to really pick up the flaps and everything in that box. <laughs> he says, there's someone to the flaps. quick at picking things up. He may come out tomorrow and get this right off. A lot of times if I have him do an exercise, um, something he needs to figure out. And you'd be surprised, he come out the next day, he's got it down. That's because he's encouraged to think things through and process them. I'm going to attempt to explain why I didn't just use clicker training to teach him to look inside each one of the boxes. I get a lot of flack from different people for um, the way I train him sometimes because in this situation, sure, you could take a clicker and you could show him the box, have him stick his face in the box, click and treat him and go on to the next box, the next box, the next box and maybe teach him to go from box to box to box in five minutes. And if speed were my goal, then that's what I would do. But my goal here is, in part, to teach him to use his mind above what people normally expect a horse to do. I want him to try and figure out the puzzle. So I give him some clues. Um, 
but I don't tell him what the whole thing is. I don't tell him, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. I don't micromanage the situation. I try to give him clues to what the game is, and he figures it out. So he's learning to figure out the puzzle. He's learning to think. He's learning to process in his own mind rather than just do exactly what I'm telling him. And in this situation, it's very important because if he were to ever be able to at some point actually do search and rescue, he would have to be able to figure out puzzles. He would actually have to be able to think through a process. He wouldn't he wouldn't be able to just react step by step by step by step to what I've told him to do. boxes farther away. We'll make it more complicated for him to find the boxes. But in the beginning, all we need to do is establish what the game is. There's a narrow line between uh, over-challenging and under-challenging a horse. I tend to go on the side of over-challenging, if anything, slightly, because I allow the horse to uh, time himself out, to walk away if he's overwhelmed. And I'm going to show you a clip from yesterday where he did that. He walked away, went up, took a bite of hay, and hung out a little bit, and then he came back down. He, for some reason, probably from that big box, uh, felt a little bit over or overwhelmed, needed a second to collect himself, and that's what he did. He was allowed to do that. I don't like trainers that force a horse to stay with the program and do what they want him to do, regardless of the horse's feelings. If the horse is feeling overwhelmed, I let them walk away. Uh, he just told me he had enough. He went back over to his hay pile. <laughs> oh, here he comes. has the apples in it and he knows it. Each day I'm just going to bring that big box out with the apples in it and one of the times he'll decide to go in it and that'll be his choice. He has a responsibility to work through his own fear. I can't force him to work through it. Oh, 
Don't watch out of the box. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> He's like, really? I know you have some in the bag. Why don't you give me the ones that are in the bag? Now, you can see here what he just did. He's probably telling me he's getting a little tired of the game. It's getting a little boring for him, just going from box to box to box. So if I were to stay out here and continue this lesson, I'd have to make it more complicated for him. Oh, he went around the barrel. Didn't see the cookies on top of it, though. This might be a little bit too complicated for him, but we're going to test him out and see. Give him a little bit of a challenge. If it's a little too challenging, then we'll back it up a little. I really would have waited until tomorrow to up it, except he was looking like he was a little bored with going back and forth from just one box to the other. the scene I'm using objects that he's used to to start off with. I'm going to try and move his scary box. There's apples in it. So <laughs> that's going to end this session. You always want to make sure you end on a good note. He's getting it quite successfully. Seems happy with it, very content, not overwhelmed. So we're going to end it here. What you've seen so far in this video are the first steps in a game that's primarily used with uh, puppies that are later be going to be used for search and rescue dogs and I'm trying to uh, transfer it over and use it with a horse and the first step in the game is to get the uh, animal to go from box to box to box to look for a box with the idea that there's something in it and then you up the criteria by adding uh, obstacles in the way that they need to go around to get to the boxes and around the same period of time you start putting treats in random boxes so that they go to one box and there's a treat, they go to another box and there isn't a treat and then they have to kind of think, well maybe I should go to another box so you're switching it up and it's becoming more like a search at that point at this point it's just getting him to go successfully from box to box to box and we up the criteria a little bit by putting the barrel and the ball in there to make him walk around it Tomorrow when I go back out, I'll put more obstacles in the way that he has to go in and out and around and I'll put more boxes down and I'll probably put less treats in the boxes because he's got the idea that he should go there now. I don't think anybody wants to see the blow by blow of every day of these sessions if you do let me know but I don't think that you do. So I'll wait until after a few more sessions where he's actually going around some uh, big obstacles and so forth where he's made some real progress towards actually searching for the boxes to uh, post a follow-up video so that you can see the progress.